This painting, I would say, started out rough. What would you say? Sometimes paintings will just fall into place. Sometimes you've got to sort of push them. <laughs> this is one of those days. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to be painting from a photo. We're going to do a nice little barn against a pond with fun reflection. Should be good. If you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Well, you certainly don't have to tint your canvas, but today I'm going to do it. There's a little dry paint globby. We don't want that in there. You can tint it all one color. You can tint it different colors. It's very dry. <laughs> You can keep your, your Mr. Bottle going. I've got my air conditioning running. So, you know, it dries pretty quick. Of course, we're painting with acrylics today. And that's why I'm tinting the canvas. I, I usually do. I like to do that. So we'll just give it a quick tint. This is kind of a loosely mixed purple. Get that tinted, let it completely dry, then we'll come back and start painting. So now I'm going to grab a color. Honestly, it's again similar to the background, but I want to add a little green to it. Maybe just a tiniest bit of, of our umber. Here's why. <laughs> I want to get, I want to get a little, that's almost, it's almost too much. Oh, it's very hard to get subtle colors. It's easy to get, it's easy to get bold colors. It's hard to get subtle colors. Just speck of blue as we come down, create a little more atmosphere and haze. You can, of course, do this as a dry brush blending stroke after it's in. But there you go. There's our little background mountain. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> okay. Now, since that was so easy, let's grab a little, I don't know, just light green of some kind. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And let's stick in right up here. Just following, at this point, we're just following the picture, trying to get us our angles in. And now you're not locked in. To this picture. If you want to change it up on your version, by the way, we should be looking at your versions right now of our last one. Let's do that. I really enjoy seeing everybody, every week, seeing everybody's paintings. There hasn't, uh, there hasn't been one week since I started showing them that, that at least a handful of you guys didn't have paintings done by the time I was ready. And I know, I know that it's not much time, but it sure is fun. If you're able to get them done in time, it's fun to see them. It really is. If not, it's cool that you're just painting along anyways, right? You're just, it's just here to inspire you, you know? Sometimes all you need is a little inspiration. Sometimes all I need is a little inspiration, right? But here, we're just dropping in some of these kind of muddled colors here just to get us something going. And it's nice to have kind of an underpainting already established just with your blues that are down in here. Okay, now, one more thing while we're going here kind of some sort of a greenish color. And it's time to start painting in the trees. I'm gonna do these trees over here first just by stamping them in. Actually, don't stamp them in. Not until you get over here. <laughs> this is all blocked in solid. What's fun about acrylics, once it dries, if you wish you had a little sky showing through, you can pop it through that way. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to leave it a sky showing if you want some sky holes. I don't know if we want any sky holes or not. It kind of just depends. Maybe we'll wait till the barn is in to choose. We can do that. Acrylics are flexible. Not always easy, but they're flexible. They certainly have their pluses and minuses, don't they? Pros and cons is really the right way to say that, but <laughs> we don't get extra points for saying the right thing around here, do we? There's a, there's a little tree here, lighter leaves at the top, and then we'll get a little darker at the bottom, just kind of tapping them in with my just number four bristle brush. Don't even know if I mentioned that or not. <laughs> there we go. Of course, all the brushes and the paints that you need here to paint acrylics, just like I'm doing, is available on the website. Link will be in the description as always. That's pretty. I think that works. Just getting a little background forest established. So now, as you can clearly see, I've got the barn sketched out and it really makes a difference because no way to, well, you could, I guess, but why would you just start throwing paint up on the canvas and hoping it worked out? No, we do that enough as it is. Let's, uh, let's definitely do the sketch. It makes a difference. So when you guys are doing your version, be sure to sketch. It makes, it does, makes a big difference. 
Okay, I think that works. And, and as you start to fill it in, you can tweak it around. It's not like you're locked in. Maybe a little that color right here. Make sure you're getting that perspective at least sort of close. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's a fairly old barn and it looks like it's got a little character and some, some movement to it. It's not perfect. And I like that. I think it makes it a more interesting painting subject. Don't you think so? <laughs> oh boy, come on now. I don't, this is not a highlight. I'm just trying to establish kind of what's going on. Okay, that looks really, really weird. Hopefully we can fix it later. Next, let's grab a little, a little black. I'm gonna just throw some black into this opening here. So there you go. And then a little black here in this opening and get this perspective right. It does have a little slope there. All right, we can work with that. Good enough. It usually takes a couple of coats. Very nice. Now I'm not adding everything in this painting. There's another little barn back there. I'm not going to add. I'm just going to, and there's a, a, some equipment here. I'm not going to add. I'm just going to focus on the barn because I think it just makes for a better subject. Sometimes you can take things out of a painting just to make it less busy, which is exactly what I'm doing. Make it a little less busy. Now as for the roof here, I'm going to, let me see. So I got to slim this up a little. So it comes this way and then down. There we go. Okay, good. This is background is wet, so it's just going to blend and mush and we'll have to just come back and paint back over it. So now I'm going to take a little bit of our white here and some blue, not too much blue <laughs> there, just white and blue. You could add, well, wait, well, you know what we should add just a tiniest speck of red because then it'll help to match a little better with what's going on behind it. Should be interesting. So to start, I'm just going to place in a little color here in the background just to lighten it. Light kind of showing through the trees. Yeah, and, and we'll play around more with this after we, after we get a little more in the painting. But more importantly, I think I'm going to drop my shoreline just a little. I think there's my new shoreline. And I, oh, <laughs> did I mention? I put that little barn back there. I wanted it. What are you going to do? There. It's kind of pretty. Just a little water action. Okay, good. Now that just kind of represents, you know, some lightness there, some lightness here. I don't know what that is. Just a haze, mist, cloud action. I don't know. doesn't matter. Just helps to create interest. Now, here's what does matter. I'm going to take a little white and I'm going to paint in some clouds up here. Just, just like this. This is my favorite cloud brush. This is the custom round. And in case you don't have it, we have some on the website and it is my opinion, <laughs> my favorite acrylic brush, Oop, I just said it because it's just unique and it gives me more control over my dry brush blending, which is my favorite technique when it comes to acrylic. So this is my favorite brush because it helps with that. How's that? Cool. Oh, that's a pretty cloud. <laughs> I like that cloud and it's okay to be happy. This painting, I would say started out rough. What would you say? Sometimes paintings will just fall into place. Sometimes you've got to sort of push them. <laughs> this is one of those days. So now I've got a color that's similar to this barn. I wouldn't say I mixed it up perfect, but there it is right there. This is close enough for what, for what we're doing right now. I'm going to take this, by the way, I was just checking. <laughs> I'm going to take this and uh, let's see right about, I'll tell you what, let's just draw straight down. And I'm going to start creating reflections now. Uh, we'll see. Let's see what this does. I'm just going to put a light misting on the canvas. Don't do that unless you're sure your painting is dry. Otherwise it can beat up and you'll actually, you know, get like a little water droplet uh, marks on your canvas. Not fun. Not fun. <laughs> there. All right. But see a little light misting does actually help the paint slide. Of course I'm using my round brush because I'm, I'm dry brush blending. Should have just called this the dry brush blending brush, but it's round. <laughs> Oh yes. Don't, don't worry about the small things. There's enough big things to worry about that you don't need to be worried about the small things. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is, takes a lot of concentration. Uh, okay. So that, that, this, that is my roof peak. I think I did that right. Did I do that right? Boom. And like that should be, that should be correct. We'll see. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Um, this is uh, 
I'm not going to pretend like this is not confusing. It's a little confusing. But don't let that worry or, you know, kind of like make it to where you don't want to do this. Just do your best. If you don't want, here's a thought. If you don't want to do a perfect reflection, just take your colors and pull them straight down and be done with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not going to be perfect. It's not even going to be close. Just, just soften that edge just a little. If you're, if you're in, interested in barn painting or you like barn painting a lot, this is the one for you because you got to do it twice. <laughs> so there's that and then there's this, which comes down. Hey, look, I did it right. I feel accomplished. Mm -hmm. So before we go too much further, I would love to grab just a little grass color. It doesn't really matter what it is, just bright, bright grass colors. And we'll be changing, you know, quite a bit, a little yellow ochre light to that. Okay, fan brush. The light's kind of coming across almost from behind today, but a little bit like this. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going with what I see. And you know what? This is actually going to be just fine, I think. Let's get a little more, just a little more green. Yeah, I think this is going to work. I'm just trying to create a little texture, and fan brush is, is really one of the best tools for the job. Not too much texture back there. Just put on some color and maybe smooth it in with your finger. These are oil, well, these are not oil-based, these are water-based, and so it just rinses right off. I don't have any trouble with that. You know, I'm happy. Happy to go rinse my fingers off when I'm done. If you'd rather not, you can keep a, a little round, an extra round brush standing by and just use that instead. <laughs> there. That's pretty though, just, just getting some of these colors in the grass that I think really add Oh, they add so much. And then finally, we might just come in with a little darker green and just do a touch here and there. Now we do have some, it's not too early to be thinking about our, our little cattails that are gonna be growing from this left side of the painting. So let's go ahead and just establish our darks where those are gonna go. That's important. Oh, it's important. It helps to frame that painting in and it makes it work. It really does. It makes it so pretty. Nice. <laughs> wow, that is super quick and rugged, but I think we can work with that. Have you noticed that every step we do is just making this water look more and more realistic? You notice that? Is that that's pretty cool. <laughs> there, all right. Hey, listen, if you don't get excited about this sort of thing, then you're definitely, definitely missing out because half the fun is getting overly excited about the silliest little things that only we would get excited about. <laughs> That's half the fun. Oop, I'm even messing up. I'm going all over the place because I'm having so much fun. Hey, you know, when you're, <laughs> when you're all over the place, you're having a good time and you're doing something right. There, because after all, that's all it's about, having fun making a painting that you're happy with. Not that everybody else is happy with, but that you are happy with. Oh man, inspirational message this morning. <laughs> I like it. We'll have some more, uh, it doesn't need to be perfect because I got cattails and stuff coming up on top of that, which is good because it's not perfect. This little guy right here. Just quickie, quickie reflection. That's all he gets right there. Beautiful, this little shrub. Nice. Now, we can highlight the reflections. <laughs> That's not something we say every day, is it? Just, just like that. Just kind of touch on some highlight here. Let me show you again. Uh, starting at the top, at the bottom, right? Oh, that's confusing. And just kind of scumbling some highlight on, more or less, like that. Not really, I'm kind of haphazard, you know, not really doing anything perfect at all. And I'm using the round brush, and up there I used the, um, I just started highlighting, didn't really finish. I just used the bristle brush, the little number four flat. This is the, the round because I want that smoothness to it. It's pretty. It's a good representation and it's not, it's not so accurate that it's weird, you know? It's, it feels like, like uh, soft water, which is not easy to do with acrylic. It's not that it's not easy, but it can be slightly challenging with acrylics to get that softness. Here's the secret. This is the secret right here, this brush. There, I love it. 
so now it's time to start working on the barn <laughs> we all we did was a very rough coat uh, some of you guys may have been wondering you know what am i doing what's going wrong maybe even ready to click away don't worry i'm coming to fix it right now i knew i knew it was bad i guess i should have mentioned it i was just throwing down color maybe i didn't mention it who knows anyway let's go ahead and just don't don't choke up on that brush too much let's just put in some beautiful details they just are going to make this barn sparkle hey you know what? it actually doesn't matter what goes on at the bottom because we will probably come in and clean it up with grass all that's dry so you can put your hand down on it and we won't mess anything up that's something you can't do with oils <laughs> it's kind of nice to, have, to be able to support your hand there on this a little bit of light on there but not too much it's just going to take a little finessing to dial this in just the way that you want it There, it is worth spending that time to get it just right. You know, take a little, just a hit of red there. Oh yeah, just, there, that looks pretty. A little bit abstract, actually. Not really, but a little, just a little. Mm-hmm. Sprinkling on some of those colors, wow. So much of the time painting looks detailed only because there's a lot of color. There's no detail there, just color. Just color. Hey, we, 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 we can add the drop shadows in later. This is acrylic. It'll be dry by the time I'm finished. With the highlights, we can just go right on to adding drop shadows. So if you'd like to, just paint the whole thing in, highlight, and then go ahead and paint the shadows in afterward, then that is fine. I'm probably going to do a little bit of both. How is that? Yeah, that's cool. Very cool just fun so hopefully you guys can find you know use my picture or find your own picture and start playing around with you know adding stuff and taking stuff away depending on the effect that you're going for it's kind of cool it's a good thing to learn you know how to adjust to things that you want to change you know hope that makes sense probably doesn't but that's okay we don't get bonus points around here for making sense, do we? There we go. Kind of pretty. I rambled. <laughs> that was a lot of rambling. But with just that little bit of rambling, we have a decent looking barn. Let me just add a few strokes here just to indicate some amount of light here on the side of the building. So it's, it's slightly weirder light source today. It's not super direct, but there you go. Everything we did up there, we have to do down here. We should be using the round brush, actually. So I'll switch to that now. And just pick up the same colors. And keep on going. So now I'm back to my number four bristle brush. And I'm honestly just back to painting trees. Just, you know, once you brighten the barn. Now the trees are too dark. It's, <laughs> it's just the way it goes when you paint. What are you going to do? So that's all right. It's just you're continually pushing yourself to improve each bit of the painting. So, you know, the barn... Ooh, I love that barn. It, it, it maybe needs some details, but not many. It does need some, but just it's almost there. I, I like it. I'm, I'm getting to where I'm happy with that. And so now the trees fall short against the barn, whereas the trees actually look pretty good against the barn before. That's good. See, just there's lots of ways to paint a tree. This is just one of them, but just tapping with this brush does create a nice effect make sure you get plenty of shadows plenty of, of color in the shadows you don't want it black in the shadows because that will lead to kind of a flat looking painting you need all of this beautiful light that spills into those darker areas to make them brighter and that gives you contrast and that makes your painting good and we all like good paintings don't we get extra extra satisfaction <laughs> if it comes out good so add those add those extra bits they really make a, a lot of difference so this is not the highlight this is just the mid-tone wipe that brush out get yourself a nice bright highlight going um yeah right right even here this works we want to brighten this area up a little right behind this barn kind of along the top here helps to draw just a little interest in toward the barn maybe a little little darker over here on the sides 
That's very, very good. Now it's important to keep misting your paints. I'm gonna mist a little bit right there in that spot. The reason is that way I can kind of just use that as a way to thin this white paint down. See that? Just whatever water is uh, is there on the palette. And that looks pretty good. I want this extremely thin and I don't want to be dipping into my jar of water or even my medium because both are both are pretty dirty. So that does the trick. Gets me a nice pure water. So just white and water, nothing else because I don't want any contaminants like green in here. Okay. Explanation over. <laughs> Let's go ahead and create ripples. And these ripples, pretty much one of the last things we're gonna do. Go soft here. Because if this paint's not completely cured, I think it is, but if, if you haven't given it several hours to completely cure, it's possible you can still rub through it if you're uh, a little a little over eager with it. <laughs> so we don't want that. No, 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 no. But I'm gonna just make these little ripples. These are fish splashing, <laughs> my son throwing rocks in the water, who knows what, right? There. That looks pretty good. Kind of some arcs like that because something was happening here on the shore to create that. It's subtle and that's the way we want it. Now this is not the absolute final step but, hold on, let me Again, this has to be cured. Don't do this if it's not cured and make sure you're far away so that you don't get big droplets on the canvas. There, that's good. Helps that to blend a little. Nice. Yes. It's pretty, isn't it? Just a little, a little ripple here and there. Helps that water to look wet. Now, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get us a little ripple um, right over here. Maybe something more like a like a fish splash or something like that right there in the water. See that? Oh, that's nice. I hope that doesn't dry out too subtle. I'm gonna go over it one more time just to be sure. It's really easy to miss just how important some of these foreground elements can be. So I'm taking just a few Actually, that's gonna be a reflection, so make sure that's soft. Good. So I'm taking a few minutes here just to throw in some more. I'm using some more cattails. I'm using my, my custom angle filbert. There, okay, that's just the dark part. Um, maybe just one right here. You know, a little character, a little broken, uh, bent over stem or something. Just Character, yes, add character. And there won't even be that much highlight, just enough to kind of show that there is some light catching. And we are pretty much done. You could do this with a liner brush too. I just like this brush since we're going bigger. Bigger brush, bigger objects, it's kind of the way it goes. Perfect. And just a few more kind of funny ones, you know, character ones. Now really the last thing to do here is add details on the bar. And I'm using the liner brush. You could just use, use just about anything that you want. A micro filbert brush would be great. It comes to mind as, as another good brush to be using for this, but I don't know, liner brush just seems like the tool for the job today. It's a lot of little, little bits and of detail that I'd like to add. Now you may or may not really need to add these in the water. Kind of look at your painting and see. I don't know. I think on mine I might just like do a couple of token ones just to say that we just to say we did it and be done with it. How's that? You know, good enough. See that it indicates that maybe there's some of the same details happening in that reflection without actually having to do it. Probably gonna be good enough. Some nice long ones there represent you know big slats in the board that works now that I've got this paint thinned way down so it will dry just a little different you know dry a little, a little less black <laughs> it'll, it'll actually kind of thin out you'll see some of that under whatever's underneath showing through which is good I think it makes it blend in makes it look natural but you won't get that effect for a few minutes so you put it on and you think mm, is this really working and then it'll kind of just melt right away <laughs> Yeah, okay, cool. Finish up here. Some big cracks and just beautiful details. More interesting. 
that way. And then if you want to go with a slightly different color for the roof, you can maybe just throw a little yellow. At this point, I've just got mud happening on the palette, and that's completely fine. It's really not a big deal. So with that mud, I think I'm going to just sculpt out a few, I don't know, just details. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.